Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. How are you all doing? Welcome to the Art of Cooking. Uh, from Mo's perspective, how y'all doing? I'm 72 the Architect, and my great co-host here is Mo Shida Mo. How are you doing, guys? How you doing? Don't, okay. don't be good so morning. excited, Mo. Come on, we gotta wake up now. Come on, buddy. No, just kidding. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Come on, everybody. <laughs> hey, uh, so I I know you may not have received the email yet because I just yeah. realized you have a Yahoo. So we'll just kind of we're not going to wing it, but I'll get I'll kind of give you lead you in, give you the no questions, word. whatever. So it's all going to be great work. Yeah. So, uh, Mo, so where do you come from? Where, where, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, how did you get involved with cooking? Oh, wow, that's a, that's a good question. Well, I'm originally from uh, Palestine, Jordan. OK. And uh, the story of me being in, in the cooking field is not as interesting because I grew up uh, so picky and so needy in, in, in eating. That, I feel you, brother. It's okay. Because yeah. you know what? I hated <laughs> onions. You know what that means to most people? Yes. You can't eat anything. <laughs> it just seems like. <laughs> <laughs> True. And uh, at this point... Uh, uh, till like uh, I was 11, 12. Okay. I was eating only like two or three items of wow. the whole entire food. Yes. Yes. Yeah, it sounds and, like my uh, daughters. It sounds like my daughters. They they either like French fries, macaroni and cheese, and pretty much anything outside of that is a question statement. Yes. Okay. True. And uh, after that, I had to expand my horizon, and and then someone, uh, a friend of mine, mm-hmm. introduced me to like uh, items, food items around, and I was like, hmm, okay, so you're eating something good. So why I'm not eating? And after that, I was like, okay, you know what? Cooking is something very good. I have to stay in the kitchen because there's I'm I missed so many years not eating, not trying. So I have to stay in the kitchen now with my family and uh, try out some new foods. Okay, so just out of curiosity, um, mm-hmm. so when was the first time that you really noticed that cooking was not just something you have to do in the house, but it really sparked a real interest. Like, like for me, cooking at home is is always a representative of, of family time. And Mm -hmm. you never want to sell your family short. You always want to give your family the best, but along with that journey, yet you have to put the passions into what makes the love come out in the food because there's nothing worse when you're, when your mom or your dad or, or someone you cook for, looks at you like uh what is it yeah it, it, it it's okay <laughs> <laughs> well uh, in after expanding my horizon after like trying uh all different kind of foods uh and tr- not even just trying it it's it's not the point that okay I'm um, I'm just eating it I'm I'm tr- um, I know what's how to do it I know how to make it even from scratch or just watching my family do it because um, in Jordan, the families are big and mm-hmm. it's not just my family's cooking. So we will have uh, days that we will be invited in our uncles, our aunts, and my family have a, a big, um, um, how do you call it? A big building that we all mm-hmm. live in. Yeah. So it's one day that we'll be in and our uh, my grandmother uh, house that she will be cooking for everybody, and I'll be over there helping. And one day it's an our house. So and so and so. So 
I took it from okay. I know how to make it, but 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 my family do it in a different way. There is some some love element, some some. I, I know. I, I, I get. I not, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay, this, Mo. I know. I know. Yeah. This is a, a little hard, this but at the secret. same time, yeah. So, can you tell me something that maybe a family member, um, your mother? that they made that was always so exciting just to have one thing, just one thing that they made from a child to even now that you make now. Mm-hmm. What is something that you make that you re- the one thing that everyone loves so much to have? I'm pretty sure um, there's a, there's one dish. I used to love it, even when I was. That's the only item I was eating through my entire life. Mm-hmm. It's um, it's called kufta. Okay, it's, what's what's inside it, or what is it exactly? It, yes, exactly. It's uh, minced lamb meat with okay. with spices. You got onion, you got garlic, you got uh, parsley, cilantro, uh, cumin. Uh, all spices and you can add some spicy into it with okay. uh, chili mm-hmm. and some cayenne pepper and you just all mix it together and you firm it into shapes and you can cook it either you can put it on skewer you can put it on charcoal but uh, the one that I do is you put it on a on a, pan, on a sheet pan in the oven you cook it with with uh, some big chunks of uh, tomato, uh, onion, potato, and you add a tahini sauce on it, and then you cook it again. And that's the thing that everybody loves that I make. And I I had a lot to fight with my grandmother or on no I do it better than you and you do it better than me. So it's kind of like I'm setting you up. I make it good. Yeah. But you're going to make it better. In other words, yeah. yeah, there's there's lots of things that go into cooking and not just like I've worked in a restaurant. I used to work in a restaurant for about 15 years. And mm-hmm. um, and I know you work in a restaurant as well. And what, there are a lot of things that may, before before people even get their menu, before they even sit down there's so much behind the scenes that go into to cooking and one of the hardest things to understand is how it all comes together and it starts from the food coming into the restaurant to the prep chef you know whether you're you know getting ready for a line or saute or grill everyone has to have their ingredients ready to go because when the first customer orders their their first item it has to show on yeah so it's very very important go ahead yeah no no sorry oh no you're 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 good i was gonna tell you that yes it does it does start not even from the restaurant itself it starts from the providers yes from from the farmer yeah yes the 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 it comes from the the dairyman the the rancher the the yep. you know there's so many things and where and then it goes to a distributor who you know who, now yes do you have like in where you work do you have a head chef that literally goes over everything inventory where it comes from what kind of quality true. he's looking for or or she yes yes no no true yes okay he he goes around and around all almost all day that he's not even the kitchen, but he is looking for the ingredients. Either way, either it's uh, he needed for special events or uh, different nights, or just because. Okay, no, I I know I got this type of, let's say beef, ground beef, but it's missing one thing that is not as very good as for for the customers mm-hmm. so he will be he will be always looking for the best sometimes the pricing is not an issue but you know 
thirty percent. That's how you can right. So it. so negotiating price for the quality of something is very very important because. Mm-hmm. You may be receiving some cabbage or maybe some lettuce that may be questionable to the eye. Like if someone were to buy it, like if someone were to see a little bit of wilt on a lettuce, Mm -hmm. more than likely in a restaurant. Yeah. uh, In a restaurant, um, at me being, I used to be a server or waiter or bartender. Yeah. One of the things that I used to notice right away was um, if there were any browning on the lettuce whatsoever, the customer would send it right back. And to a chef, that's dollar signs. That's literally, even though a couple leaves of lettuce may be worth 10 cents, um, it really boils down to... um, To a whole paycheck. Yeah, to a whole kitchen. Because one thing can set a whole uh, chain of events. And that one person has the power to do one thing now people have talked about cancel culture now everyone in the restaurant to restaurants business or restaurant tours understand cancel culture before it was even a thing yeah. because a reputation of a restaurant and especially with the today in the internet now is really based on um reputation and of course and a chef literally has to manage so many people in the kitchen so many people with so many different jobs and there's so many noises and sounds and everything. He's like, he's like the, what do you call it? The composer in a symphony. mm -hmm. And, and from him, then it goes to an expediter or they call it an expo. An expo. Then you will follow his lead. Yes. Yes. Hey, we got three messages. Let's take a break for the question. Let's just hear from these wonderful people real quick. Just to let you know, if you're going to troll, I'm going to delete your call immediately. Or if you're under age, I will delete you in a pro- in it very quickly. If you're inappropriate or have any racial slurs, I will delete it in- and report you if you're inappropriate. So just to give you guys context. So keep it cool, people. All right, let's go. Do you like the game Fortnite? No. Sorry. No. no. Hey, uh, Mo, question for you. So what is the item that you are, like, when you're preparing the dish for, what is the one food product, the one thing that you cook with that you are the most finicky or the most picky about, that it has to be in search a such and such and it has to be between this condition and this condition. If it's this condition, you won't use it. This condition, it's not ready yet. What is the one food item that you would say you are the most picky about when you prep it for your cooking? Oh, good question. That's a very good question. I don't know, Zenzia. Um, well, for me, it's it's all about seafood. If it's mm. not fresh, if it's not uh, today's pick, I'm not even going to buy it. I'm not even going to pick it from the store. I'm not going to even t- take it from the provider. Mm. And just if I, if I even have it and it's old, I'm not going to use it in my station because if I cook it and I know it's not good, the customer eat it. And, and you know, the chain of thoughts that I have to take through this, I'm not going to do it anyway. So, no, I need to, I need the seafood to be today's pick, f- fresh and very good in quality before... I even start cooking it. What is the, the, if you don't mind me asking for you, what is the hardest seafood item to have come out? Well, really good. Well, if you, if you say in the world, worldwide, uh, fugu, the blowfish, Mm -hmm. because, um, the skin of it, whenever you kill it, if you don't prepare very well, it's going to be poisonous. But I've never mm-hmm. had the chance to, to cook with it. I'm not so professional to, to kill somebody like this. So No, I'm but like it. something you commonly cook in your well, kitchen. For me, uh, it's something very hard for me. Mm-hmm. Um, that you're really picky at. For me, whenever I cook uh, scallops... Mm-hmm. Whenever and 
like I make like every once in a while, uh, what I really love to make is something called cipino. Now cipino is, it's like a, an Italian seafood kind of like stew and it has crab okay. mussels. It has scallops. It has shrimp. It has bits mm-hmm. of fish, snapper, tilapia. I mean, deep and it comes in a spicy tomato. We red sauce with some onions and uh, pepper. I mean, there's different spices that go into it. But uh-huh. One thing that I know that almost all, all chefs probably would agree with me is preparing a scallop correctly. And a scallop is very moist. It's very, yeah. it, it's temperature sensitive. Yes. Yes. And so if you don't know how to flip it right, it and throws you flip off it early. True. Yeah. It throws off. You can't just flip it like a burger. It doesn't work like that. No. Yeah. So that's one thing I would have to say, like in my experience, making it and serving it, I can tell mm-hmm. by on the presentation of a scallop if say like if it's yeah you, know, you can you can see the grilling sides or even mm-hmm. there's some if, if you don't even cook it well you will see it's like a sponge it's not gonna hold up it's not gonna be no. holding up uh, a volume it's gonna be floppy and uh, sitting down on the plate a sad scallop yeah and I've seen chefs literally just toss plates across the kitchen being so pissed you know when a dish is so say just to give you all perspective when a dish is like 38 dollars to you to a chef that's that's a hundred dollars to him or more because if someone sees something elegant and beautiful and then it smells good that it's it's literally triple the worth of its initial cost. So it's very important to understand what you're dealing with. And I feel like scallops for me in any kitchen I've ever worked with or served from was definitely something that a deadline. Yeah. Yeah. So is there any other seafood that you felt is also sense sensitive, you know, that you make and it's just like, it takes very, a lot of concentration. No, not really. Not really. Not really. I, I've I've been well trained to, to to take all all the you know mistakes around, and I work. I really rely on on people with me. So if, so yeah, all the things on you know the elements from me, my team, everybody, uh, the distributor. It's all the small elements that. Uh, minimize all the mistakes Mm -hmm. and whenever you know the recipe you're not gonna you're not gonna have any bad moments yeah no you're not and see and here's the thing from my perspective when I became a waiter I just was like one of those waiters just give me my food get out let me get out of the way and so before Mm -hmm. a waiter talks to anyone there is a there's one guy that usually are woman that really separates from everybody else that, that backs up the servers, that talks to the managers, that talks to the head chef, what's going on because not usually the head chef is not always cooking. And when he does, he's really backing up everybody else because he designs the dish. He does. He makes sure that the chemistry from saute, you know, station one and two are working and hearing the calls. He's watching it. Is the grill guy really paying attention to his heat? You know, he's looking at, yeah, you know, if he's looking if he's, if he, if yeah. the dullness is, is right. Is that a cook? Is, right. Uh, so he, the end he brought up. Yeah. And the expo, he's the one that assembles the calls. Like, look, I need three fish. I need one burger. I need, I need one spaghetti. And how he calls it out, it's, it's like he's an extension of yeah. the composer. And and yes, and the expo doesn't just look the doesn't just ask for the dish, you know, because there's some some people will ask for a a main course, uh, an appetizer in a main course, or they will want a salad with the main course. Yeah. And and it each dish have have a have a time 
to prepare and be done. And the expo, he be like he he have a watch and he have a kitchen watch. There's a clock on the uh, usually on the counter, yes. right? Yes. Like tick tock, tick tock. It's like mm-hmm. FedEx, but it's seconds. It's minutes. It's like, yes. And <laughs> the funny thing is that he will understand not even the station, not even the, the, the dish. He will understand the people because some people on different stations work differently. And maybe some people are faster in, uh, in, in the salads. Some people are faster in the grill. Some people fast faster in the, on the saute or on the sauces. And he also can understand, yeah, maybe maybe tomorrow... I want to see you on the sauce, but he will not mm-hmm. call it by himself. He will call. He will ask the, the executive chef. Yes, yes. Because and... he he always have a time. He always have clock, and and he always look at okay, uh, a fifteen minute dish. Why it took it sixteen minutes for you? Right, because when you fall behind, the it's one all thing. Clap. Yeah, I've seen grill guys literally fall apart fall apart on the line because there is one thing that goes on in kitchens because kitchens are very loud and there's a lot of yelling and they're not being, they're not trying to hurt your feelings, but I've seen it where people have had a bad day and like the grill is holding up everybody, like literally everybody, you know, like pantry can only do so much pantry, you know, making salads, you know, um, timing things out. But then there's another person like, you know, like what I used to do when I was a server and I could be fucking things up. What if I forgot to put an order in or give a ticket? Mm-hmm. And there are things that there's some things like, okay, let me just give you pi- people perspective. Anytime you order a well done steak, it's going to take 20 minutes. Yeah. Even if I, even if I had to put a press, which is a metal cover over it, Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, it take a, a, a well done steak, depending on the thickness, is going to take twenty plus minutes. Yeah, and, and you're talking about eight and eight ounce and, and twelve ounce, and no, no, yeah, it's twenty minutes minimum, and the whole kitchen is looking at you and how how are you gonna chew this meat because, uh, and especially if you go to a he- a high end restaurant, don't mm-hmm. don't the highest that you can. Uh, order is medium well, and this is I'm talking about this and, is the highest, yeah. And and any chef like knows that when he hears that well done, he's like literally like scratching his head, You sure you want that? Because there are some people who don't know about food, like I come from the Mexican culture, and they think most of the time a well done steak is perfect. And I'm like, You just took all the flavor out in my mind. Yeah, you literally, I mean, you took the flavor out by all the juices. And to me, when I make steak, I literally, it's medium rare to medium is perfect. I can't do raw. I've done rare and it just doesn't work for me. But yeah, no, no, no. It, it depends on, on, okay, for me, let's say a Wagyu beef, I'll eat it rare. Oh, yeah. Wagyu is different, though. Yeah, like goo has a lot of a lot of marbling and fat yeah. in it, and that's what makes the flavor, mm-hmm. you know. So for like, for for spe- this specific, I'm gonna I'll, I'll eat it uh, rare, but regularly, yes, medium, medium rare. That's no more than highest because unless you you're going for a place that you don't know where where the way where are they getting their meat from, you know. Mm-hmm. It's it's you, you will ask about the grapes. You will ask about where did you get their meat, and from that question you will understand which dumbness that I should go for, because some restaurants will they will cook it a little higher on the dumbness because they know their meat is not that good, right? And they right. will hide it with uh with sauces. They will hide it with uh, marination on it, but. A good steak, it's only salt and pepper. Yeah. You can add, you can add, and and butter. I've, I, I, yeah. I, non or unsalted butter not, with no canola oil in it, like real yes. raw butter is 
gold in 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 a in a professional kitchen. Yeah. Because I have seen someone try to throw margarine on a steak. Oh no. And it's like a crime. It's like it's like a sin. Like, like what are you doing? What yeah. are you thinking? <laughs> and it literally and you and you can taste the difference right away. Mm-hmm. You know? But hey, we got five messages. Let's get through That's these real broken. quick. Yeah. <laughs> Nope, not gonna do it. Yo, seventy two. What up? What up? What up? What up, Mo? What up? What up? What up? Just dropping by, just show some love, share the show, get on with this money, money fucking Sunday. You know what I mean? But I'm here, to chill. I got a show here in a little bit, but I just wanted to vibe and chill with y'all and talk about cooking because I'll be cooking later on tonight. Yeah, these. Thanks, Mister No Show, my good buddy, my normal co-host Monday, Wednesday, Friday on Blank Canvas. If you haven't checked us out, then make sure you do so. But uh. Getting, uh, we got three more messages here. These people up. So what size of Nope, not gonna do it. No. Sorry. Hey guys, I'm just chiming in to say hello, Jason and Mo. Good job. God, oh, the 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 mafia's in the house. Godmother's here. I better I better put on my 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 tie. I'm a little I'm a little nervous right here now. <laughs> Godmother's here. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, 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 I should be playing the the Codfather uh song, you know, uh, up for her. But uh... in a minute, <laughs> all right, Nasir. Yeah, because I'm a chef too, and in the kitchen, uh, a lot of my other fellow chefs say if you're doing it any farther than that, they say you might as well just order a hamburger instead because they said you're taking all the flavor out of the meat, and then it's just thick and solid. And they said you might as well just you know order a hamburger at that point. Yep, yep, yep. Order cross. <laughs> Thanks, so. Mo, how you doing? How you doing? Hey now. Good morning, Benny. Sorry about yeah. your account. Yeah, yes. So, all right, next up. <laughs> oh, uh, no, no, no. Gonna... I understand. I understand what this, what's going on because you know on Saturday, I'll, 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 I do the. Uh, stir, uh, on <laughs> the Zen Lounge. Uh, I, you know what? For all you trolls, I got somebody for you. I got somebody for you, and you're gonna be hearing this. Hey, gentlemen. I'm gonna send hey. Godmother over to your house. She's gonna bring a baseball bat. You know what I'm saying to your niece? Hey, Careful. Fine. <laughs> all right oh. <laughs> all right here we go yo 72 the architect mo what's up what's happening man what's going on yeah man back in the day when i used to bust tables and shit man yeah um it all depends on the kitchen man because you could um it, that could hold everything up including busting tables and shit you know what i mean and sometimes if the restaurant slam you know what i mean and i see all this shit and the, the food comes early you know what i mean i tip the chef man my wife was like, why did you do that? I was like, hey, that person back there went through a lot of shit to get this food out here. But anyway, man, I'm just chilling, you know, checking you guys out. What's up? What's up? Yeah, yeah. All right, I'm locked and loaded for the trolls. You call in, you will be tr- treated with some dear kindness from me. So, all right. But getting back to uh, cooking, uh, you know, one of the things, like we talked about white goo. Mo, can you explain to people what Wagyu beef is? Okay, in in the short term, Wagyu is uh, a well treated uh, breed of cows that they only eat uh, wheat and they drink beer, and they don't have they don't move around, they don't exercise, and they have a daily massage just to maintain the the breed. The greed, it's the top brand one of the top brands of 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 cooking of sorry not cooking of uh, a cow and the marbling of it that it got almost 50 percent of fat in in one piece of steak it's so tender it's i mean and when they does, say it melts in your mouth it yes, does it melt does in, melt your in your mouth True. and how much have you ever had to pay for Wagyu? 
Me? Yourself? Yes. Have you ever had in a to... restaurant? No, but I I'll pay for the for the steak itself. But uh, yes, it's a minimum a hundred. I'm I'm pretty sure in some places. I I paid hundred and fifty dollars to have yes wagyu on my plate in San Francisco. I have I have paid that much, and it yeah. was it was my third anniversary with my my woman now, and she looked at the menu price and she was like, "You got to be freaking nuts! What the hell? You- I'm all if I I'm asked a- you, and I always tell her if you have to look at the price, then you're paying. Yes, if you. If you're reading the, if you're reading about the dish, it's you're not paying for the food; you're paying for the experience. Yes, yeah, and you're, you're, and and I think we take that for granted nowadays. I mean, re, I mean, if you went back to restaurants like forty years ago, yeah, going out to a restaurant was a, even going to McDonald's for me as a kid. I'm forty eight. Going to McDonald's was a special treat. Let alone going to a nice restaurant. I I did not go into any nice restaurants till I worked in one, and I happened to work mm-hmm. in Yosemite National Park was my first, and I worked at what was then called the Wani Hotel, and let me tell you that was my first experience and working in a real. Uh, it, I would not say it's a Michelin star. It has been, but it, but to be a Michelin star, there, yeah, it's that's, rated that's on three. Thing. Yes. So and if you got one star, that's a big thing. It is a big deal. If you got two, you got business. If you have three, you're, you're backed up months in advance for reservations. Yes. So I know one. Uh, if I don't know the name, but I know the story about it. It's in Japan. It got three Michelin star. If you want to book for one seat, the the whole restaurant got 27 seats. It's a sushi bar, twenty-seven seats. If you if you want to take a reservation, it's gonna take you one year to have yeah. one seat on this place. And a restaurant can lose their Michelin star. Say, like yes. if a Michelin yeah. critic comes in, and you were three stars sure. before, and you fuck up, um, you can go with zero, just in an instant. Yes. And 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 it can shatter a whole restaurant's business in one day. That quick that's how quick it is. True, true. You know, and so like when people see these shows like Hell's Kitchen, Celebrity Chef, it's really that shit ain't nothing. That's nothing no. compared no. to what really happens. You know, so when we speak about why goo you're and you're paying like I think the most I've ever paid for a dinner was like three hundred and fifty dollars between me and my, my girl. Had a bottle of wine, had a seven course meal, and she was tripping. She's all and that I, I think I left like a hundred dollar tip easy. Yeah. And I'm not rich. I'm not don't think I'm wealthy. I'm not. It was a special experience between me and her that we see we're street food eaters. We love street food. We feel authenticity in food comes from the street. Yeah. Closer when to you, the people. When you, yeah. It's it's not the street. It's when you get the 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 food from the person who cooked it. That's yeah. you, well, that's what you're looking for. Right. Because and that's what we are. Um like I know I know it's because Mediterraneans are similar to uh, Latinos, they cook more at home than going out. And the first thing is that you look up for the experience that, yeah, someone's cooking in the kitchen and they are handing them, they are having the food for you and you eating it just hot. And that that experience that you're looking for in street food. And that's what it's keep going with it. Absolutely. That, that doesn't change the 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 fact about the restaurants and what experience can get from different restaurants. Yeah. And uh, yeah, there's a there's a story about a about a a chef. His name is uh, uh, Luisi. Mm-hmm. Um, so he have uh, two Michelin stars in two thousand and two. 
And on the February 24th of February 24th of the next year, so 23, he lost one Michelin star. Oh, on that's that day, brutal. Oh. On that night that he shot himself in the head. And just, that's... For, losing, just for losing one star. Wow. And see, I remember a Disney movie called Ratatouille, and uh, the yeah. whole premise was—I mean, it was, this is a, a this is a fictional tale, but um, the chef, the original chef in the movie, had had passed away, and yeah. this substandard expo chef took over and just turned the restaurant into garbage. And then you've got this this kid from the country coming in with. <laughs> meets a rat and, and the rat teaches him smell and aroma and taste savory there there are flavor words that go into cooking yeah and when from the met with from the moment the menu hits the table and first opens it's like a spell book it yeah. really is and this spell book has all these choices and the combination of those choices can make or break a restaurant sometimes and or sometimes really sure. give that restaurant that boom, like, wow, this is so amazing. So a lot of people who don't understand this experience um, are guided. And there's people like me who would help them understand, like, if you're always ordering uh let's just say mozzarella sticks and calamari and that's as far as your appetizer goes. But yeah, there, some people look for the, whatever they used to, to have. Yeah. Whatever they know, because it's scary yeah. looking at a menu. You see words. I don't see pictures, but that, a real that's, restaurant. Why, that's why servers are around. So you can ask them, okay, can you tell me about this dish? Because chefs will not just put, a, uh, a dish in, in a menu oh, without explaining it to the whole team. Mm -hmm. I know one chef that he will have, whenever there's a new menu or a new item or even any update up with the menu, he will meet, he will, he will have a meeting with all the staff. I'm talking mm -hmm. about dishwashers. I'm talking about uh, cleaners. I'm talking about um and bus boys, everybody, everybody have to sit down and listen because you don't know who's going to ask you and you have to be prepared. Right. You cannot say no or I don't know to a customer. Yeah. And that's I, I used to, I used to hate it as a waiter when people say, what's good to eat? And I, and I like a smart ass, I'd be like, oh, everything's good to eat. That's kind of stupid question yeah. is that. I mean, even waiters go through stress. And so what waiters have to deal with, the emotional content of the customer at the table, from kids, their date. Um, does this person even know what kind of cuisine they're getting themselves into? Mm -hmm. You know, like I worked in an Italian restaurant a lot of times, and they the typical thing would be order fettuccine alfredo, lasagna, spaghetti with meatballs. But see, it was my flavor words and my understanding of taste and aroma that would literally turn people on. Like they're asking, and I'd always ask them, have you ever been here before? And they're all, some of them would say no. And some would say, well, yeah, but they were lying. So I would always, it's like psychology and I would always figure it out. And then I'm like, oh, you know, for today, I would like to, re I have a few recommendations. I'd, I'd lead that. Hey, good evening. How are you folks doing? It's good to see you. You know, my name's Jason. I'll be your server tonight. Um, I have a few recommendations if you'd care to interest, be interested. So you let them, you offer that, let them ask you. If they say yes, then I'd say, okay, well, tonight for uh, antipasti, uh, which is, um, like an appetizer, a starter course, I suggest the mozzarella alla caprese, you know, and, yeah, and you, yeah. and you literally zing it up and they're all, what's that? And they're all, it's uh, fresh from Italy. We have some buffalo mozzarella. We have uh, balsamic vinegar from 
a certain region of France, and then yeah. I would say some some basil or or some radicchio, uh, whatever leafy what that would go the with it. And they're all, and you can see the light in the eyes go off, like, oh, what's what's that? Yeah. And it's like yeah. it's the it's the perfect starter to begin your exploration or your journey here tonight. And then I would lead them into, you know, the, you would have the soup or we'd have, you know, um, say like tomato bisque or a uh, lobster bisque soup, whatever, you know, or even minestrone. And then you would lead them like, Hey, um, you know, I would, I would steer them. And then when it would come to the main courses, it would be like, Oh, I'd have a fish in mind. Like, look, I have soul. You know, I have a breadcrumb sole mm -hmm. with a light seasoning of whatever, pepper and salt, and it comes golden brown over um, some orzo pasta, mint spinach, radicchio, and, and just using these words and you all hearing me, that's yeah. the experience. So I built it up. I gave the billboard. It's like giving the commercial, like, yo, I'm ready to go to the store and buy that shit. Okay, mm -hmm. damn, I'm ready to do this. Then that order is punched you in the computer or handwritten ticket, and that's when the expo and that's when the insanity begins. Yes, that that's when the, I need this, this, and this. Ten minutes. Yeah, literally. You know, you know, I got table six. You know, da da da. I need, you know, I I need three ensaladas. I need a two two minestrones, and I need yeah. them out in two minutes. And hold on, this table number. And yes, yes screaming yeah. it's not about that we scream but you have to be heard mm -hmm. and you have you have the it's if you if you got the lead you got it if you don't then you will you will see plates everywhere and you're gonna and, the, and there's commands out. yeah there's commands like what like yeah. if i'm the chef and i call out an order what do i need from you after i call the order i need the second one you know, I'm are you saying yes, I'm chef, or no, chef? Are you saying, you know, are you telling the chef we're out of, say, like spinach? I can't make that right now. He yeah, calls oh back God. to the back of the house. Go, go get me some spinach. You Ooh, know, one for spinach. True. Yeah. So, but uh, the, yeah. go ahead. No, go ahead. No, man. But um, no, it, it, it's. It's a symphony of okay, we got let's say the whole house is a hundred table, and mm -hmm. twenty tables come in at like one time, and then another two chime in, another five, another ten, until you got a full house. Mm -hmm. And whenever you have a full house, they will come and tell you, "Listen, we got a full house, so let's keep going." At this moment. Everybody in the kitchen knows that everything should be perfect and everything should go in the time. And it's a matter of time to finish your job and take a rest. But for now, keep your mind on the grill. Keep your mind on the, on the knife. Keep your mind on the board. Work hard. Get the food out. Then we can talk. Because one thing is very, very um, upset the chef, make him flip the shit out, is if you argue while serving time. It's either yes, chef, no, chef, I don't have it, I need it, can you give it to me? That's all you can do. That's all you can ask. And if you want to start arguing, the chef will argue with you. And you don't no. want that. And no, don't want, you don't. It's not, it's, and he's not arguing for the sake that he want to know who's right or who's wrong. The chef is always right. And Always. He, uh, yes. And he's not arguing to tell you uh, no, maybe, or there's something about the item that you, you are talking about. He's, he's telling you to get back to your job because you, he will he will give you a limit of, of of two three minutes to keep talking because you you are under stress 
he will let you talk, he will argue with you like a human, but after that, he will tell you to shut the fuck up and get back to work. And it's literally that, shut up, get back to your job. I don't yes. need to hear anything. If not, you he, know, will tell you, he will tell you, leave your apron on the on the kitchen and leave. Take your knives and pack up and go. Like that. No, no, come back. For I've seen knife. that happen. Come back. I've seen him. that happen. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Like, I, I've seen it in the restaurant where there's no replacements. I've seen the head chef have to go behind the line and take over a station because guy came in with attitude. Yeah. You know, had a bad night with his lady or whatever. You know, that's why they say in restaurant business, you check your emotions at the door. Literally. You yeah, really you, do. You leave it in the in the locker room. Right. Yeah. Um, and And if and- you don't. It's gonna you're gonna you you're gonna you. feel it, yeah. You're gonna feel it, and yeah. and you're gonna be like, you're gonna be like, what the hell? What's going, What's on? going on here? You know. And when you're you see uh, when you see one of the cooks go off the line, you're like, oh fuck, oh fuck. Like seriously, like damn. I've literally seen guys shit their pants on the line when a grill guy is given too much attitude, and the chef sends them home. Like get the hell off my get off my line. Yeah, and everyone's like looking like, oh god, I can get my stuff out, but the grill's like, like to me, yeah. out of all the stations, the grill guy has the, I think, the biggest amount of stress because it takes the longest, you know. Yes, and and you know, it's not that he got to do, he he's got to do with all the meats for all the plates and with all the different cuts and. Uh, and all different Dunlesses and all different temperature with the time that he's giving. So, right. he, because, because if you look at what he's doing, he's not only have like three steaks, he got three steaks, two fishes, uh, mm-hmm. uh, five chicken, uh, and on and on and on. Right. And, and, and what is, and now quantify that now, Mo. If I were a chef and saying, I've got a party of 25 coming in, mm-hmm. what does that do to your mind right then and there? I have to prepare my station. I got I to gotta look up my station if I get the I better take 25. a quick look at everything I have. Yes, because if I don't have it and, and, and they will ask for it, I have to prepare it at this moment. And pre- some some restaurants, if you want to prepare something, it's going to take you a minimum of from five to ten on each dish because all yeah. of the elements, all of the items on it. And and, and, and large you, parties, the food doesn't come out all at once. It doesn't. It usually comes in doses, and that pisses people off. Yes. Like... I, I remember serving, I think the biggest party I've ever served was a party of 40, and I had to have two assistants. Uh-huh. And I was so metho- I was so good at what I did. I was methodical in how I took the orders. I would have my assistants make sure that you go over the drinks and the appetizers first before I even talk to them. Yeah, I would introduce myself kind of like a conductor. Hey, my name's Jason. Welcome to so-and-so restaurant. This is the way it is. You know what? I have, you know, say like Claudia and I have Matthew aside of me. These people will be taking all your drinks. Any recommendations that you may need for your start? I will be going over the specials in just a few minutes. But while we're getting here first, is there any birthday announcements or we have any special uh, people to celebrate today? And that would be the time to recognize. Usually when big parties come in. the star? Yes, who's the star? Who do I need to focus the most on so that they're taking care of because they're the honored guest? Yeah. And so by doing that, it takes the heat off of everyone else from the mom to the dad to the brother, the wife. They can yeah. just chill out because I focus on them and then it works down. Like I would always start with the, the honored guest and then the elderly, elderly first. I'd take a little bit more extra time when it came to theirs because they could have food allergies. They could say like they can't have shellfish or they're a little slow. They don't read so well and they're very simple eaters. You know, um, I used to hate it when I'd ask if there's a senior menu menu and the restaurants I worked, they never did. 
They never had senior menus. So yeah. what I would try to do is manicure to their age bracket and what they would eat normally. And I would flavor it up and make them feel comfortable like I was their son taking care of them. So yeah. my role as the actor to go to them and literally perform and make make them feel like I am family. You're my family. You're in my house. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You are a guest. Yeah. And I'm going to make sure I'm going to make, I'm going to take really good care of you, you know, with that being understood. So just knowing that when I communicate to the expo and saying, I got food allergy on, on six party of 25, you know, these yeah. dishes. And then I would ask them, I don't want them to feel uncomfortable and saying, do they need to eat first? Because sometimes people are diabetic. You sure. know, I have to un understand their needs, yeah. you know, and some of them say, oh, it's okay. I don't want to. And I'm like, you know, it's okay. You know, hey, mom, it's okay. I got you. I got your back. Don't worry. I got you. You know, that's, and so that's, that's even that's even light up the, the whole table because you taking care of the of them. That's mean. It's not mm -hmm. there's someone special on the table. They're all special. Yeah. But then there's another element to that really we used to fry my ass. But we're going to go over that after we hear these two messages. Let's hear these wonderful people. Just remind cool. folks, remind yourselves, if you're going to come in, you, you troll, I got something for you. So here we go. Did I hear somebody's uh, fucking around on uh, 72 Architects and uh, Mochi to Mo <laughs> show? What did I tell you guys? No fooling around, trolling around on my friend's shows. Anybody here to cause trouble to them, I'm coming after you, and I'm coming after anybody you know. Leave 72 and Mo alone. Capiche? Love you, guys. Oh, mother. shit. Because you know what's going to happen? She's going she gonna to take you out to the car, and you're going to be a... Oh. You hear that, folks? We're going <laughs> to... Gonna... Yeah. Nobody's going to know where you're at. Hey, you're gonna be the food. You're gonna be the fish food, huh? You're gonna be on my plate later on, regurgitated. All right, next up. You guys are funny. Help me cook with some pizza, boy. Ah, oh, uh, that's a kid. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while. You get away with it because you didn't really try to light us up. So this is a forewarning. If you are under the age of eighteen. And you are chiming in. You will be reported as an underage. So we we do so that. We got two more messages. Yeah, let's hear these up. Oh, fuck. I, uh, all right. I'm not going to troll you. I won't troll you. I, I don't really have any other content, but. Sorry. He got shot. That, that's for thinking too much. Get out of here. <laughs> Talk to my friend Luigi. <laughs> yeah, all right. Um, so Mo, do you guys ever have a special station where you need to prepare uh meals for people that have specific allergies at all or not? Because I know for us we have to and we take special orders at the school that I work at for people that have allergens or gluten freeze and that kind of stuff. So do you? Question mark. Well Ooh. that's that's good. But most restaurants don't follow up with that. They they try to minimize uh, using nuts and gluten, and if if there is a person that does have an allergy, they will cook it from scratch for that one person. It's gonna take extra five minutes, but they will especially the expo will 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 leave his expo for five minutes, and he will prepare this dish for the allergy. If it's so uh, difficult on the station to stay away of the allergy, and and yes, some some restaurants will have a special station that it have most of the condiments uh, separated. That one chef will go, one of the line cooks will jump, do the dish, and come back to his to his line. But I I prefer. Everybody stay in his line. Everybody uh, stay focused. And the expo will tell him what's the allergy. And and they have to think. They have 
because every every line cook doesn't do the dish uh one time it, he do it They're doing it several times like every hundreds time, of times every day the whole week the whole entire uh time that he's over there so if you tell him they got a nut allergy and he got some nuts on the on the on the salad he would just he will he will definitely change his his glove he will definitely look up for a new lettuce that or new elements that they didn't touch the nuts and usually they will keep it away from from any other kind of food so it doesn't uh, cross contam uh, cross cross contaminate cross contaminate with with the other elements. So yes, and there's all kinds of weird allergies. I have a lady who said absolutely she was a, allergic to onions, and I'm like, and if anyone knows anything about onions or garlic, it's very rare just for someone really to have an allergy, yeah. and it's a certain condition that comes across once in a blue moon but then there are people who just straight out they hate onions like me i hate onions with a passion you know you put pickled onions in front of me and i'm literally gonna i'm gonna puke you know and i tell the waiter in advance or whoever i don't give me no onions yeah i'm not fucking yeah i don't eat it you know but then getting back to the experience of of cooking and restaurants um there's that always that one person every day that wants to come in like they're Gordon Ramsay, the critic and like really just butcher everything and try to get a free meal. It happens like a lot, almost every day I've ever worked in a restaurant. There's always a freeloader as I call them and they will bitch. And this is why it's so important for every server to know how it is within two bites. Yeah. Not for them to get halfway through the meal, like go get me something else. And it's like, no, I'm not going to refund your money. Oh. You're you're going to pay for this. Yeah. You know, within two bites, if you don't tell me, and I don't know, that's my check and saying, you know what, something was shit, or you're just a user. And then that's where the mater d or manager would come by and they would schmooze and like, oh, I'm so sorry, you had this bad experience, and they would mm-hmm. like. One thing I, I used to have this experience with a lot of young managers, like I don't know, the waiter, maybe he's he's new. They'd make up some bullshit about me, and I'd be like, I'd call them out on their shit, and I'm like, no, I've been here for 12, ten years, six, seven years. I'm I'm here doing this. If I make a mistake, I literally go to the guests and say, you know what, I made a critical mistake. Um, I delayed putting your food. Being honest with people is money, because yes, just the way you're. You way so, way you deliver honesty to people is is critical. You know? Yeah, they will. If if there's if he got a something in his mind, he will be like, okay, no, yeah, that's that's yeah. He did he did say and he did say something. He was he came to me and he he told me that yes, he did it. So some people will be like, yeah. no, no, you're good, you're good. They will they will reverse whatever they have they have spoken. Mm-hmm. And they will, they will be like, okay, no, no, no you know what? I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna eat, keep eating it, uh, and they will try to embarrass you, to be like, and right to let, to let the server be like, no, 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 okay, now you're telling. So, it it's really about the communication, and that ruins the reputation, believe it or not, in restaurants, it really does. Mm-hmm. Like. Like if if one person lies to set up somebody else to fall, you all fall, and that's why yeah. it's very critical to understand the maturity of everyone who works with you. You know, from the dishwasher to the to the headline chef, you know, to the head chef of the restaurant, to the manager, yeah. to the waiter, to the bus person. Everybody's job is very very important. You know what I mean? And if it's not important to you, guess what happens? You're, you're not going to work for very much longer. Yeah, you're not going to yeah. be there. And and that's it. Just it. You know? So, yeah. So, getting back to food in itself. You know, Mo. Um, 
you know, first of all, thank you for doing this interview today because I'm very appreciative. I don't get to talk restaurants very much to too many people. I don't get to talk about food. Mm -hmm. And I really wanted to do this one and I was waiting for the right person to do this show with, you know, thank about you. this specific issue in yeah. or, or topic. Uh -huh. And one thing I want to say is, is like, you know, being in the now being, you know, an experienced person in the food industry and now in the legal industry, I left the restaurant business uh -huh. and it's, I still, it's, it's been like six, seven years since I've been out of the restaurant business. And yeah. the day I quit is probably the busiest day out of the year for restaurants. And that's mother's day. Mother's day is busier than Valentine's oh, yeah. day, busier yeah. than Christmas. Mother's day is like hell on earth because everyone wants to bring out their moms to a restaurant and reservations right. are backed and booked and overbooked and timing is everything. And just like all the, this image that we we've shared with you is now imagine that you have literally a three hour waiting list, three hour waiting list for reservations. Yeah, that's a lot. You know, I've been in those kind of restaurants and that's great and you don't have time for any fuck ups you really don't but when you get through that day the sense of pure exhaustion yes you're i got through it and don't get me wrong mother's day i would make a pretty good sum of money i think the most i ever made in one day was twelve hundred dollars twelve hundred dollars for yeah. a four hour period of time. Yeah. The peak. And yeah. And I see one restaurant I worked at. The last restaurant I worked at was Romano's macaroni grill in Stockton. And um, the, my la very last day in the restaurant was I was only going to work uh, the morning and lunch. And that was it. My lunch cutoff was two o'clock. My replacement needed to show up, be there by one fifty, yeah. so I can transfer over. And that was the deal. Because I was leaving to become, to start practicing, you know, law. So my, my then boss came up to me at 1.30 and told me, well, you know, Regina's calling out sick today. She was your replacement. And I'm like looking at her like, mm, you better figure it out because come two o'clock, I'm, I'm walking. I'm, yeah. I, 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 I really meant it. And guess what? She kind of like ignored it. And then I told my guests, I made sure that I paced out the meals to where everyone finished by two o'clock. I was so smart about this. I knew timing of everything and how long they wanted yeah. to wait in leisure. So I had done that before I had that conversation with her at 110. And I would fill all seven of my and I was waiting tables on the patio. And I had seven tables and I literally I knew what to do. I had all my tables filled all at one time and I synchronized it so well that came 155. They were paying, they were finishing up. I collected my money. My boss is like, Well, how long can you reset these tables? I said, I told you I'm leaving. I'm going to spend time with my mother. Yeah. And and she was like trying to get there's a, like this mental manipulation. It always goes on in restaurants. Always. It never freaking fails. And they try to get to you and make you feel bad. And I just remember I did the, I wrapped up my apron, took my money out. I took the credit card tips out of the cash. And I said, here's my waiter wallet. Have a nice day. At sure. 159. My, and, and my, the whole line looked at me. I was very calm. And they all heard it. The expo looked at me like, oh, shit, come on, please just stay for. A... No. Yeah, I'm done. I'm done. I was supposed to quit in four more days, but I just literally said, I'm done. Nah, fuck all this. I don't I don't need to be a part of any of this crap. No. I'm done. And so I handed the manager. Here's the money. Here you go. Tossed my tie. Uh -huh. Threw it in the garbage, took my ape, my apron, apron, threw that in the garbage, took my pins out, threw those in the garbage. And I just walked out and strolled out. And I'm like, uh, have, a, you know, y'all have a beautiful Mother's Day. I, I you literally shouted that out. 
<laughs> and every <laughs> like the restaurant tour, all the people in the restaurant are sitting inside like, oh fuck, what's going on? Happy Mother's Day. And everyone cheered. Everyone cheered in the restaurant. Yeah. They're like, dude. oh, happy Mother's Day to everybody. Yeah. And everyone's all, yeah. And it's an Italian restaurant. I mean, it was just, it was just, it was, I could not have done it any better than that. And that's how every, most waiters who hate the restaurant business, how they want to leave. They want to be like, I want to stroll with some pride and because they take on so much. Yeah. So I left Mother's Day, two o'clock, walked out, called my mom, says, Mom, I'm coming over to cook. You know, bought me a six pack, you know, made something for my mom, hung out with my brother, sister, and my mom and, and their families. Okay. And that was that was it. I was done. You know, but restaurant business is very stressful and, and people don't realize that the, the precious power of cooking and food. Like right now in Texas, people are starving because the the grocery stores are still pretty emptied out and they're just getting yeah. over that freeze. Now, can you imagine being in, in like a third world country where food is not so prevalent? Like here, food is abundant. Yeah. You know, even having a small dish. Let's take, for instance, um, where you come from even in Jordan and Palestine. Is food really so abundant? In a sort, yeah. You know, is, is it is it treated like it's respected? It does. Because is it is it respected more over there than it is here? Yes, yes, for sure. So we t we kind of take things for granted, wouldn't you say? Yeah, we do. Yeah. So when whenever you go, folks, whenever you go to a restaurant, appreciate even if it's just a hole in the wall or it's a food truck. Appreciate the people who serve your food. I always had, I used to have a saying: Don't fuck with the people who serve your food because they'll fuck with you back. It's no joke. It's it's really no joke. Like I wouldn't spit in your food, but I find other ways of getting back at you. you I know. know and I was, <laughs> and I always let people just like people can have a bad day, but doesn't mean they can be an asshole. All yeah, through. that that's true. Don't don't you know, throw your shit at me because I already have some shit. I already left it out of the of the restaurant. I so. I here here's a couple things you don't do to a, a server. Don't do this. Don't raise your hand and snap. Oh my god. Waiter. No, no, no. This this snap. Okay, so no no don't do it to any person because this is really disrespectful. Mm -hmm. uh, when I'm they do that, that is literally telling the restaurant, every person yeah. in the restaurant, that's literally saying, fuck you. And everyone keys up on it, whether a guest, every server knows that sound, like distinctive, even the expo, if it's an open air kitchen, he even looks like it's like an echo, like a gun went off in a building. And it's, it's like all hands on deck, you know, like the manager better be making his way and finding out what the hell just what happened. Because if someone has to do that and making a scene, that makes other people uncomfortable eating. Yes, yes. You know, so we got to mess this here, this person up real quick. Oh, yeah. I once dabbled in the restaurant business as a dishwasher, though. Oh, boy. Where do I even begin with dishwashing? Some days it was a fun job. Some days, but some days it was a freaking nightmare. Used to have dishes like stacked all the way to the facility's rooftop all around where the dishwashing station is. And if your dishwashing machine broke, oh boy, it was a nightmare within that itself. Most of the restaurant that time had to wait until the mechanic has to come in and fix oh. the machine. <laughs> That's one of those instances that I remember. That is literally whole. Oh. That's horrible. And you know, now Mo, is it very up. important? Okay. Yeah. I'm just How important look. is it to have your line stacked with plates? I mean, this is this is the first thing you do even before you prep your station. I mean, what, 
it's before you handle food, you have to pre- prepare your, your dishes because if you don't have the dish, that's mean you don't even have the plate to, that will go to the customer. So mm-hmm. I would salute, I would, I would say to all the dishwasher workers, you, your job is way more important than you think. Because mm-hmm. if if you didn't clean well, if we we rely on you, one in one point, both servers and kitchen. Because you're talking about dishes, you're talking about containers, you're talking about pots, pans, all of that. If this if if the dishwasher didn't show up, the whole thing will collapse in a way or another unless someone just jump and be like okay I'm gonna be over here I'm gonna do this job because he said if the machine doesn't work it's gonna stuck up and if the person doesn't work well if there's no person on the dish guess who's gonna have to get in there and manually wash it yes so I've seen a whole restaurant shut down because a dishwashing machine broke like to where they had to they couldn't even hand wash things fast enough. No. And I've seen it one time in my life out of the 17 and a half, you know, years I've seen a, mm-hmm. a restaurant literally shut down. They had thousands and thousands. They had, I remember the day I worked in this restaurant and I just remember that it was so bad. They emptied out the whole line of, all its plate capacity. We're talking thousands of wow. plates. Thousands. Yeah, that's a lot. And there's usually in, in a restaurant, there is like so many different plate types. You know, there's coffee saucers to a main entree to a pizza platter. You know, it, yeah. And they're heavy. They're not light. These things are meant to take industrial heat mm-hmm. and stacked. And they like you take a plate of regular entrees, say like a like a what is it a, like a 10 inch oval and you yeah. stack that's literally like 50 pounds on you yes. know or no 30 pounds on you and then like when you hand that over to a chef across the line he's like mm-hmm. you know he, you can get a hernia from that shit and yes it it's gonna hurt you it, it will i've seen chefs hot as well come oh come yeah when they fresh yeah. come out of the dishwasher and they're hot hot yeah. Oh, I've burned That's my hands steamy. before. That's steamy. Of of yes. So it's it's a lot, and yeah. it's a great to be in this experience. You know, as a provider, like I provide the experience. Me, you. It's way mm-hmm. much different. It's not much. It's not much different than cooking at home, because. At home, there's a provider and there's a giver and there's a the one who will enjoy all of that, and both of mm-hmm. them have they have the joy, they have the love, and uh, the warm of the heart from the food and from the person that who cooked or prepared. And as you said, families, families does, um, they. I mean, the way of of just cooking for the family, that you wanna you wanna get them something to eat, to experience. Right, and, and you have to love cooking. You really do. Yes. You have to love cooking because I know chefs who cooked all day and then they go home to cook a meal for their family. Like we're talking yeah. seven people, and they're exhausted. Like we're talking literally exhausted, and they okay, still so- make. Enough for seven people from scratch, manicured out. Yes. You know. Yeah. But so we got two messages. Let's hear these up. Hear, hear these people up. Uh, the one thing I hate is when um, somebody gives you a plate and the plate is like warm out of the dishwasher. They didn't let it get cold first because for me, I think the plate gets warm from the food. But if you're putting uh, hot food on a plate that's already hot, you can already feel the temperature difference or you can um, feel the difference in your hand from the food and that's disturbing. Or when someone worse comes to worse puts cold lettuce on a hot plate, 
it just ruins the taste of the salad right then and there. That, for me, is a major. Oh yeah, no-no. yeah, that's true. Hot, hot, you can't, hot food. You, you can't hot give plate. hot plates to pantry. You can't. No, no hot food and a hot plate, cold plate and a, and a cold food. And yeah. Have you ever seen a salad fried because the plate was too hot because it came out of the dishwasher? Yes, and and I, for me, I'll throw it away. Or right. the easiest way, the easiest way, keep keep ice around you. And yeah. whenever you have this hot plate, just dip it in that ice. And that's why they have chilling fridges for plates. Yeah. Like, yeah, you know. But we we're, we're talking about if we're emptying the plates, so we don't have any plates, and this is the only plate that you're gonna give it to me, and it's hot. I'm just gonna throw it in ice because my salad. I don't want my salad soggy. I don't want the salad that I have cooked and prepared for you. Yes, I've seen chefs be... literally take the, their hand washing sink. And because the plates were so hot, like just dip it, have the cold water running, boom, give it a, a, a splash, just enough for it to cool down. Yeah. Okay, I'm putting it right Wipe on the line. Down. I've got a, yep. True. Yeah, I've seen that. And you never, know. never put a hot steak on a cold plate because. Yeah. Steak... Oh, you'll fuck it up. You'll, yes. Yeah. You'll. Yeah. We got two more messages here. These up here, these people up. Thank you all for those who are calling in and making great Thank comments. You for Good morning, Mo. Hello, seventy-two. Hello, H Town Loki. Thanks for calling in, my friend. Hey. My bad. I got a phone call. Anyways, what's up, Mo? What's up, seventy-two? What are we cooking today? The whole so now H Town Loki. If you've never come across him. H-Town Loki has a lot of respect because he is he's into barbecue and smoking, and that's a whole different oh, other discussion. Yeah. Smoking, like he's the kind of guy that will smoke something for 18 hours. Yeah. For for food to be served just in 30 minutes in at a, a 30 minute eating experience. Even less, yeah. 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 It, yeah. And it's... and that is that is methodical. That is mad science. Right there, not to take away from restaurants, but barbecue. People a lot of a lot of times people like to say they can barbecue. A lot of people, I feel, they just grill. They fail. Yeah, they just yeah. You don't like with barbecue and things. You don't need the basic ingredients here. This is, I think, you could probably agree with this. Whether in a restaurant or barbecue, Mm -hmm. salt and pepper are the most essential. The level of salt and what kind of salt you use, yeah, and pepper make. A meat well and really fresh well. pepper. Fresh yes. pepper. Don't don't buy the ground the ground pepper. Well, I use I use the ground sometimes just to create a layer sometimes with a mixture of salt. Like I use either kosher salt or Mediterranean sea salt. I use that a mm-hmm. lot on my grill, but it's it's you know that guy that was famous for pinching and then dropping it down like like below his forearm. Yeah, uh, he comes from Turkey or she whatever. Thought, she's- Salt yeah, pepper. Yeah. Salt and, pepper, yeah, but see, that's how little you need on meat. Oh yeah, yeah. believe you it or not, you only need just so minimum beer because you have to buy the best for yourself. Yeah, I some pe- I see some people put over marinating, over seasoning, and it's just like you're tasting the seasoning and not the meat. See, I like to taste the flavor of whatever beef, chicken, lamb, you know, yes. turkey, <laughs> you know. It's it's the cut itself. It's the cut of the meat. There's the, mm-hmm. like, I, I I don't recommend a steak to to be marinated, but a flank, yes. Um, yeah, a flank steak a bird, is different. Yeah. yeah, but don't like you can just marinate it and just, just like you would not want to marinate mar- a filet mignon, for example. No, you don't. Oh no, no, no. You braise it. You 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 cook it with the braising. It's it's similar. And it's it indirect heat thing. for the most part. It's not direct yeah. heat. Like mm-hmm. the process of cooking a filet mignon is you sear it on each side, then you put it in a saute pan and you put it in the oven. That's you it. know, and then you the last couple minutes, because filet mignon cannot be made anything over medium for a filet, you you, you ruined it. Oh. Because yeah, like absolutely. Wagyu, it's it's filet mignon is probably the next most affordable to the average customer that they can afford. 
and they get yeah. mad when they see how small it is. But if anyone understands what a filet mignon cut is, versus like it's a New York the, porterhouse or T bone, the most tender meat of the whole cow. Yes, and that's yes. why it's, that's why it's expensive. It's it's the ratio of the cow. Okay, let's take let's take down the cow, the 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 beef tenderloin, from the beef. It's it's between let's say six to ten percent of the whole weight of the cow. So if you're t- telling me that this six percent of of meat, and it's it's weighs six ounce, that's mean the cow probably weight more than six hundred uh, kilograms. Yeah. So, I, I agree. So, so taking this 6%, this is the tenderest uh, cut of the cow or the beef. It is going to be expensive because it's so little in this big uh, beef. And it's so tender and it's so delicate that, yes, it is expensive. But if you treat yourself, you are what you eat. So if you yes. eat very well, and you don't you woof it. it down, you don't over it. You eat it slowly. Here's the thing: I'm going to teach some people about things, something about food. You probably would overlook, and you're like, "Yo, why the fuck are you telling me this?" But just to put in context, a well-made dish, whatever it may be, whether grill, sautés, pastas, take time to chew and savor in your mouth. What I would do in teaching my guests some of this, even from drinking alcohol. Like when I would bartend, this is how methodical I am with the flavor and smell. I would make a margarita different from all other bar- bartenders by using the same ingredients. Just by first mm-hmm. presentation, like how I measure exact ingredients. Like people would say, oh, hook me up. And I'm like, would you rather, would you want me to hook you up to get you fucked up? Or do you want me to give you um, something to last in your memory forever? Yeah. And then they'd be like, oh, no, just give me fucked up. No, seriously, think about this. Uh, If that's the case, why don't I just give you a couple shots and you can be done with it? I'm not going to get, I don't own the restaurant. I don't give you nothing for free. So there's no hooking up first and foremost. So what I would do is like, if they order a margarita, I would like a chef, I'd have my ingredients laid out. And shaking it up and having them see. And then one of the things about my margaritas, for example, would be like when it has that perfect froth and you can see the vapors coming up from the glass. And if you really notice this, it sizzles up like bubbles. And it, and then I'm like, uh, can you, and I would do this with the ladies, especially I'm like, can you do me a favor before you take your first drink in there? What's that? Can you close your eyes? And I would like you to smell. Take a mm-hmm. very nice smell. Take a, and then yeah. relax, and then take a drink. And just by doing that, I changed people's experience about cocktails. And but and they would never look at a margarita ever the same. And they, I would have repeat customers coming back for that same for the same margarita experience yeah. every single time. I had one lady I worked. For 10 years, every Friday night at a certain time, she picked her bar seat with her husband and they came in and they wanted from that first experience to the, to the day I left. And I ran into them like a year after I left and they said, I haven't been back because you, you were gone. They told me and I'm like, I'm sorry. And they're all, that was our, our special moment of the week. No. And we haven't found another moment like that. And now you're just, giving me chills. Yeah. Just and, hearing that. Oh, what's that again? I said you're giving me chills just hearing that because that's all we need. After after a long day, when the chef or the the whoever give you something to eat, when the the way that you express yourself to to me. It's it does give me chills, and now you're telling me the story that after a year, that that was their most and the best of their week. That that's the all they had. That, yes, that's all they had. This that's is the highlight the of their week. week. Yeah. That's that's thing that we look for. And yes, I need to give to everybody an advice. If you are going to eat in a 
in a good place, in a place that you know it's pricey to you because they it's a five star, a high uh, fine dining, mm-hmm. high end restaurant. Don't go there and eat because you're hungry. Go there and eat for the experience. Go there. Yes, enjoy your company. You eat. Enjoy the company. Enjoy the people around you. I really recommend if you eat a snack 40 minutes to 50 minutes before you go and eat on that restaurant because um, your body You're not starving. Is, your your, your, your not stomach starving, is not... Yes. Yeah, you're not going to hoover it. You're not going to vacuum it down. Yes. And whenever you get the plate, the first thing, you look at it from not from one angle. Turn around the, the plate. Look around. See what's in it. Um, smell it. Right. And then and then and then touch the fork, the spoon, wherever it's it's a salad, meat, mm-hmm. whatever. And and whenever you cut through the steak or through the chicken or the fish, uh look up for the steam that's going up. That steam, this is this is aroma, this is an experience that it's, you, it's you should savor it. it's to save, yeah. Yes, you should dig in your your nose and you smell it, so you would understand what you're eating. And after you smell it, you look at it in your fork, and then you put it in your mouth, and then you chew it, and you let it melt in your mouth, and you let the experience of the smell, the food, the crunchiness, the soft, all of these textures. That we look and in the plate, that we provide in the plate. I want you to experience that, and whenever you do it, that will change your mind on the plate. That will change your mind on the on the, on the servers, on the cooks, on the whole restaurant. So yeah. don't go, don't go there because you want to eat. You're hungry. No, go right. there for experience. And here, here's so another tip for you folks: when you cut steak, don't cut straight down. Cut at an angle. Angle. Use like a forty-five degree angle, or uh, you know, not Just ninety degrees. Don't. Bit. Just a little yeah. bit. Just tilt it. Yeah, tilt it. Cut at an angle because the way that the juices retain within the bite, the moisture either goes straight down in the plate, and you see all that blood, and that's sometimes that like, that makes people sick by looking at it. But that all that blood or that flavor is escaping the the beef. Mm-hmm. You know, same with That's lamb or, or flavor. Yeah, right. Same, same with, with like everything. pork chops. Like, like, like a to me, a pork chop. People say, "Oh, pork chops have to be well." Well, no, they don't. They just have to be at a right temperature. I think it's like one sixty five for. Uh, I could be wrong on on a pork chop, but uh, I but it's been a while for me to remember. But you cut that at an angle, and you and you realize that you got to cut with the accoutrement, the mm-hmm. the the sauce that may be coming with it in the bite and you and you slowly chew and let the sauce swirl in your taste buds and that makes the experience that makes literally uh what fruit critics really look for because they can tell you if something's off you know yeah so we got three messages let's hear these people up and see here what they have to say i have a question for you guys um, do I have like this pan that has like the grids in it and, um, it goes on the stove. So like, if I want to make a burger or a turkey burger, it's almost like grilling it. Right. Should I like heat that up really super hot before mm-hmm. I throw like the burgers on? Cause I noticed the stupid burgers have been getting stuck to the pan. Yes. Yes. Um, heat it up. A- let it heat it up, start. but don't get it. Don't turn it on high to heat it up because if it's Medium too high, it what happens it's gonna is burn. it's going to burn. If you do below medium, my cooking temperature on 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 the stove is pretty much medium and below. So when I preheat it, I give it like uh, five minutes to heat up properly. Um, and she's talking about like kind of almost like the serrated pans, you know, that, that heat up it's, faster. It's got than... a griddle. It's got a gr- it's, it give the grill marks. So yeah. I, I, I would say heat it up and then put it down to medium 
whenever you want to start cooking something and spray it with if you got a spray oil or you just brush the oil gently on the on the pan and then you cook you put the uh the burgers the steak chicken whatever you prefer right so heat it up and then whenever you want to start cooking on it just a uh, medium yeah. to medium high uh, between medium yeah. and high and medium that's that's yeah. perfect all right we got two more messages let's hear this up See, that's why uh, what 72 Architect was saying is that's why when I go to a bar and I ask them for like, you know, a Long Island iced tea and I say, hey, I want it for flavor, not for knocking me on my ass, getting me drunk, that kind of stuff, you know. And they're like, they look at me twice and they're like, are you sure? And I'm like, yeah, I want it for flavor. And they're like, okay. They take a little bit longer, but they taste a heck of a lot better and the drink just stays with you longer. And personally, I think it tastes way better. And plus, my that too, management loves it because you're staying within the beverage parameters as well. Yeah, you never, sure. you never have to. Uh, the people that say hook me up, I'm literally already discounting you. I really don't want your attention. To be honest with you, when I bartended, I I don't want to deal with you because you're literally insulting. That's where they call a bartender a mixologist, which is like a scientist mm -hmm. of alcohol yeah. and knowing the spirits and see. I thought at one time I wanted to be a sommelier, you know, which is basically a wine expert. A wine but, expert, yes. And I have very extensive wine history and knowledge. I mean, it's it's sickening. My here's the sad part: like, like with with my woman, she doesn't like wine. She just likes a really nice cocktail or a great beer. She's very simple. Uh huh. But me, I'm very very intrigued when. I go to a restaurant and I order a glass of wine or a bottle of wine. I want to know. I want to. I want to see the label. Year, I, the label. Yeah, what year? Where does it come from? You know, I'm. I, I'm methodical because when I choose a bottle of wine for my food, you know, I don't bear. choose a bottle of wine bear. first. Yeah, I have a spirit first. You know, I have a light cocktail. That's why, like, when martinis come in a smaller glass, that's why they come in a smaller glass. They don't come in like pint size for a reason, you know, it's to get your, just to relax, just feel the aromas like either gin or vodka, you know, have a gimlet, have, have a Gibson or have a Manhattan. Like the art of, of cocktails alone is special in itself, you know, like sure. understanding sure. what spirit you're ordering. Like if I'm ordering Glenn Levitt, you know, do I want one finger or two? And people are like, what the hell's one finger or two? It's the amount of alcohol that goes in. And then, like with scotch, there is always water. Now, you can do it with one cube, one solid big cube that yeah. pours over the ice. Or you can add warm water to create what's called a gold ring. And the gold ring shows that the spirit, that the scotch, has the perfect amount of aroma and taste and you enjoy it, you savor it. So that's just on spirits alone. But um, to get back to Michelle's question, here's one recommendation I learned from H-Town Loki. Lower temperature, you know, put your, do maybe a dab of olive oil or, or avocado oil on your pan, you know, and, you know, the light salt pepper on both sides for a burger Put your thumbprint in the middle, and I want you, when you lay the, the burger down, I want you to do a, the smallest cube of cut of butter and stick it on top, you know, or an ice cube, a, a small ice cube. Put it on top, cover it, don't press it, and let the temperature rise and wait about, oh, six and a half minutes. Then flip it, and then, you know, you don't have to repeat the process yeah, it's all one. You know, depending on what temperature burger you like, but the butter and maybe a little bit of the water keeps moisture within so that yes. when you're it doesn't like the flavors don't escape. And don't get when you're making a burger, don't do 100% lean. Make sure there's fat in there. Yeah, it, it, it's the best. Yeah, you Very you hard. have to understand Angus beef versus just like regular chuck. True. You know, you know when yeah. they say FDA certified, people don't take in consideration what the hell that means. 
And I can tell you from years of cooking that it is very important to understand that. So um, some people are like, I'll oh, just give me the Costco uh, frozen patties. I'll just make a freaking burger. No, nah, I, when I make a burger, I make it from scratch. You know, I actually learned this from my father-in-law and he takes bits of diced garlic and onion and with fun. egg white or an egg yolk and mashes it all together to make the perfect patty, you know? So that's my yeah, recommendation man. to Michelle. All right. Next up. Yeah, people don't realize that uh, things you consume are, are very intimate. And uh, whether you're drinking it or, or eating it, it can be really a part of an experience of your life. Yeah, thank you, H-Down Loki. All right, next up. Honestly, the finger thing I don't think matters too much. But if you really think about it, would you... Would you... Would you rather have your left big toe or your right big toe? Because, I mean, either way, that's going to suck. It's going to feel weird to walk. Let me know. It's, it's going to feel <laughs> weird. That's funny. I almost took you serious for a second in the beginning. I had to hear you out. Yeah, I was like, mm. and then I was like, okay. <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna feel sorry when we you, yeah. you lose your fingers. So yeah, because otherwise Godmother's gonna come by and she's gonna be like, "Oh, <laughs> done. See you later, buddy." <laughs> well, listen, Mo. Um, I have um, I have some things to attend to. Yeah, so no worries. and I. It's been a great conversation. I'd love to continue it with you either next sure. week or the week after. We can do continue part two of the art of cooking. Yeah. Uh, yeah with sure. Mo. Yeah. And if you'd like to be interested in doing that, we can do it again. It's been a great experience. Thank you all oh, thank for those you. who've come in. Uh, Mo, do you have any social media that you'd like to share with people, either IG or Twitter, they, if they can follow you? already connected. Just, just, just hit his profile and hit him up. Yeah. And yes. Thank yeah. you, thank you, and thank you, the architect. Don't forget to follow the architect. Yeah, yeah, follow Mo Mo Cheetah. He does shows with Michelle or the Godmother every so often. I don't know if you guys are doing a regular thing. Uh, do you guys do a regular show? Yeah, yeah, Saturdays mostly. On Saturdays, but, uh, we're all moving off for two weeks. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. So Mo, it's been a great experience. Hopefully, you've had a good time. Thank you. thank you, sir. Thank you, and thanks for everybody. Thanks whoever chimed in and. Uh, uh, was a good attempt to the show whoever it was not no it was a good show did. in my mind it is a good show it, it is a good show whoever attended yeah. here thank you very much and thank yeah, you yeah. Architect. well thank you all for attending the art of cooking i'm 72 the architect this is mochi the mo have a good, good have a good day and be safe <laughs> yep yep and we're gonna exit right about let's see 30 seconds we got the option.